on my own, I'm, you know, the month of February, I made 5,600 bucks. And we are at a place, they're a market farm out of backyards. Here's the main man, what's your name? Jim Kovaleski. And what are you doing? I'm packing for my local health food stores. Got an order going this morning. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't let me stop you. Keep yeah, doing what you're doing. Going. It's mostly front yard gardens, believe it or not. Um, so, it's become a, this area has become known as the garden district. The front yard garden is now the new backyard garden, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. It's People out are there. really getting it. Yeah, and they're Ain't getting scared it. It's be beautiful, too. <laughs> you know, it's crazy how good. Oh, I know. Let's, yeah, well, you'll see, look hopefully. Look at this. I mean, just, just yeah. here, and this is just your staging area. Yeah, this is because it got so shady. Um, yeah. I'm not gardening as much here, so I moved down the street. Um, okay. Borrowing land, pretty much, which is pretty cool that you don't need to own the land. Salatin well, talks about that a lot. Yeah. You know, the fact that you can be a portable farmer using other people's lands that's not being used. Good so, for you. Yeah. So how much land do you own? I just own this little place here, which is all <laughs> shady. You know, I, I did the pond and everything. And I had more gardens planted here like eight years ago. I've been doing it almost 10 now. Good for um, you. And then I switched down the street. So as the garden evolved, so let me get my as hat you grow, on. You just find another yard, huh? Yeah. Started, like I say, about 10 years ago, George started this probably six years later. I don't know, five years later, he started farming. He's been going to market oh, really? too. So this is my neighbor. He got known as Broccoli George because he grows broccoli like crazy good. Um, he's in transition. He's going into the spring garden. I go to Maine so I don't do much of a spring garden. Yeah. Yeah, and you see me every morning walking down the street, you know, in the dark most of the time. My neighbors think it's cool. Um, they don't care. They actually well, groove on it. I guess, I guess why wouldn't they? Look at this yard. Right. I mean, it's, it's rocking. And then, They're like, please come to me next. Well, they, I've had the guy offer to lease the one across. So. so what do you have to give him? A little bit of veggies? Well, he was wanting cash. I, I uh, don't want to deal with cash, so I've, I've yeah. kept off that because I can I barely maintain this. For one guy, this is about a half acre of land in production. Okay. Um, so I'm busting my butt probably 70 hours a week for yeah. maybe 10, 12 weeks. So um, I, you know, by myself, and that's how I've chose to work because I don't work well with others. You found the job for you, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm living the dream just like you are, Justin. Taste awareness for me. So. They used to grow this back a long time ago, called it asparagus broccoli, right? Yes. The Chinese call it gailan, but try that. Just try the stem. That's what you want. The stem is the, the sweet. Stem. <laughs> the yeah. stem. It's incredibly good. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Sweetness. Never um, heard of the stem being any good. Yeah, I mean, that's so I tell my customers to think about it as asparagus. You know, because the top's good, the leaves are good, but they're sweet, not like broccolini, which is kind of bitter. Mm -hmm. And there's like, I'm trying like five varieties, but it comes, that one's called Suho, and I've got Happy Rich. Those are the two I kind of cool. uh, grooving on, yeah. So that's fun, you know, introducing people to new crops, too. Yeah. Growing on good soil, that's where a lot of the flavor comes from, too, though. But this is all coming, you know, the fertility stream here is free yard waste from my city. Uh -huh. They compost it. You know, they take our yard waste, take it somewhere, compost it, and they'll deliver it back to us. So it's a cool um, circle of life that we're, I'm growing food with my neighbor's yard waste to sell to them at market three blocks from here. Wow. Um, it's a really nice tight circle, and you know, I, go, I got a little dump truck, so I go get it from them, but I probably put you know, 50 yards of the free compost across this every year, so that's my fertility stream. Yeah, um, I see a lot of wood chips. So. Well, see, the thing so. is, so that's, you know, it's three-quarter finished yard waste. You know, and I'm liking that better than finished compost. Everybody bows to the finished compost, yeah. but I see this as diversity on the top of the soil. It kind of self-organizes. Uh, yeah. The wood chips stay on the top, the fines go south, you know, or, or deeper. Um, and that's really a nice thing. I used to sift it, but it tended to dry out more than that. So okay. I like the wood chip. To anyone who thinks putting in a front yard garden has to be ugly, here you go. Look at this. Isn't this not the most beautiful? front yard you've ever seen <laughs> the wood chips helps keep the weeds down helps keep these plants moist creates organic matter little maintenance high growth high performance gardening that I've evolved over years to get real intensive um, so I'm just picking the outside leaves of these plants so they continue to produce in the same space um, and I get a lot of production this way. Uh, it's kind of like the French intensive method, you know, that Coleman talks about a lot, that, you know, you can, if you always are maximizing the space, um, you can produce massive amounts of food on small space, if you got the organic matter to support it. Um, and I have it with that new Perrichi compost. 
and you get a diversity too. I'm growing probably, I don't know, 70 different kinds of lettuce here. You know, all in all, probably 150 different kinds of leafy greens that I go through, do this, mix them in there, right? And then I'll put them in a bin, wash them, spin them, and sell them as a greens mix. Sweet. And, you know, organic has gotten a name for, you know, just, um, you know, what you didn't do to the soil or what you didn't do to the plants. And what I'm seeing is organic is about what you did do. Because yeah. the quality on the, you know, the nutrient density on this stuff, my, my customers are always telling me this stuff lasts two weeks in the refrigerator. Yeah. You know, whereas, you know, some of the stuff they're getting organic from the grocery store, five days it's going slimy. And I don't think it's about the freshness as much as the quality of the food coming from the good soil. Man. Uh, now, wait a minute. Your potatoes there are jamming. You know, I'm, I'm introducing... You're not supposed to be able to grow potatoes here, right? Well, no. I've, I've heard a lot of this stuff about how you can't do any a lot of things. I told the guy he couldn't grow garlic here, and sure enough, he looks it up on the internet. You just got to put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> Sim, they call it vernalization. So now he's getting hard neck garlic here, which I told people he couldn't do. What do you mean put it in the refrigerator? You know, you can grow tulips the same way. So you put it in a, a cold storage for a certain amount of time, oh. simulating a winter. Oh. That produce makes the bulb produce. I mean, the, yeah. the you know it produces a bulb then. Um, potatoes. I'm really psyched on the fact that I'm growing not the yields I get in Maine. I get like 20, 25 to one on some of the stuff in Maine. These are about five to one, but it's yeah. like a 70 day crop here for new wow. potatoes. I mean, here, come look at this. So these have been in the ground maybe. If I had my tag, I think they were planted like probably 10 weeks. Here's the old potatoes ready to harvest. Yeah, so this is a variety called Corolla that I'll be taking to a buyer's club. Um, and you know, that's some baby okay. new potatoes. Delicious. With no skin, you know, yeah, you can just, you know, I'm selling these, you know, at a fairly good price, three bucks a pound, and people don't blink because, again, the taste and the quality is something like you never got. To, nobody these days gets a potato that was dug that morning. No. You know, and then grown out of good soil. Huckerai turnip, that's what the seed packet said, but I found a, a woman came from Alaska to one of my markets and I asked her if she grew them here, and she said, oh yeah, but we call them snow apples. So wait a minute, you're growing them in Florida, she's growing them in Alaska. Yep, Seems and like I found out about them in Maine. Plant there. And I found out about them in Maine. Some guy, about this time of the morning, I was at Common Ground Country Fair, and Jack Cortez says, oh, you gotta try one of these. I don't like turnips. Six o'clock in the morning, come on. But, you know, he gave it to me and... Raw, too. Raw is the only way. Really? It's in, I mean, I All turnips never or thought. just this turnip? That turnip. And bite a little deeper. Wow. The, the, as My you get, kids would like this turnip. Yeah, as you get to the center, it's so tender and sweet. Mm. You know, so definitely I always tell people to try them raw before they cook them because turnips you cook. And then the greens are exceptional. They're much like a, um, spinach. Yeah. You know, um, so to, just to move this into Florida, I guess they were growing them in, um, you know, back in the 2000s, but nobody had them when I started growing. So what are you doing? You're at the market handing out samples? I've learned to do that. Yeah. And then people just buy them. It's yep. crazy. The baby carrots too, once they try them, it's just like, wow. You know, they think baby carrots are the things they get in their bags that are all, you know, whittled down with yeah. a whatever machine, but you can actually grow baby carrots. Coleman pioneered that. That has, has taste. Oh, yeah. It's actually I mean, sweet. Yeah. Who would have thought with a turnip? Now, did I hear you saying you also live in Maine? I farm in Maine. I'm an <laughs> itinerant farmer. So, you know, I'm like any... A snowbird know, farmer. Well, let's call it indigenous that culture. They, they used okay. to do that, right? Yeah, you yeah, kayak, you're right. Kayak up and down you're the right, coast. you got me. So you follow the climate that produces abundance. Yeah, so nice. I leave here about um, the 1st of May, get up there, plant my crops, you know, get the potatoes in the ground, start mowing the grass. I was telling you I mow like seven acres with a scythe, and yeah. that uh, feeds the garden. Nice. Um, grow through the season, sell a little at farmer's market there, then pack up my old 65 um, F-350 dump truck that I can make that into a <laughs> minivan, or well, or like an RV nice. that I can sleep in the back, okay. bring back like, I don't know, maybe 4,000 pounds of food that I sell here when I get here. That gets me going uh, until my crops come in at Christmas time. Good for you, man. Yeah, it's working out great, and it's just slowly evolved. So crops are going north. I'm taking onions north. Um, I used to take citrus before the greening took them out. And everybody's excited to get that oh. because you grew it, and here it is. Yeah, it is connected. So it's not really local food, but it's connected food. I think yeah. that's what we yeah. need to talk about. You know, local within just a certain parameters it can be, you know, slow you down a little or yeah. limit you. But if you keep connected, you know, people are waiting for those apples I bring back, yeah. varieties you've never heard of. Cool. You know, so it's, it's a cool lifestyle. I bet y'all want to know. This is a market garden. He doesn't own this land. 
He gives them, do you have to pay him some money or do no, you No, no, well this produce? is actually my, you know, my mom owns this place. Okay. So I'm borrowing her land. My ex-wife owns that one. Most people got a mom. Yep. Well, <laughs> and an ex-wife. Favor for. <laughs> yeah. Most people, half the people have an ex-wife. Right. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah, we're good friends, so she let me garden. So she gets free veggies out of it. Yeah. You know, and I'm actually doing a buyer's club with her work. She works at the Attorney General's yeah. office and, you know, I do a buyer's club there. She takes stuff to them and, you know, I get some cash out of that and she makes her worker, her co-workers happy. How, how much pounds of food do you think you get out of here in 12 weeks? Yeah, over the year. Well, see, we don't need to just talk 12 weeks because I, I harvest sweet potatoes when I okay. come back, right? So that's, yeah, let's that's do a, a big let's volume. Let's do a year then. So, God, these days, at least 10,000 pounds. Okay, and so I bet what people really want to know is how much money can you make doing something like this? On my own, I'm, you know, the month of February, I made 5,600 bucks by myself <laughs> in the month of February. You know, okay. that's crazy. That's gross good. or have, is that profit? That's gross, but I have no expenses. You know, I maybe okay. spend in the year 500 in seeds, you know, and yeah. a little for water. You're doing all the hand, record. you're doing this by hand. By hand. You're in great shape. Good and no guy. help. You get some exercise doing this. And you get really good at, you know, functioning to make this all get better. And every year I'm increasing production because I'm learning the land better. But I love the fact that the land's taking care of me and I'm participating in taking care of the land. Yeah. I'm not the, the, the manipulator, I'm just the participant. got going on over here? I'm getting this ready for market. I'm washing and spinning using my expensive method, my $4 salad spinner. I bet I've washed 10,000, well, at least 5,000 bags. Wow. You know, and you know, they got that one for Johnny's that cost like 300 bucks. That was four bucks, I think. It's pretty much ready to eat. You know, there'll be a little bit of, you know, like right now the oak catkins. You know, so I, quality control, because I do small batches when I wash it, okay. allows me to get really good quality control. That's the other thing about that big salad spinner. You know, you're doing this massive amount, and you'd really lose a bit of quality control, I think. And it's kind of funny, if you move from the bottom, all anything that was heavy will fall through it, so it's really clean. You know, I'm a little debating about the city water, but I mean, you know, you got to choose the better. that through that RV filter? Yeah. And you know that instead of weighing or anything, again saving myself time because I'm a one-man show. That that is a bag. What fills that? You know, it's it's usually about a half pound. It'll go anywhere from you know, seven to ten ounces, depends on how generous I am at the time. Like I said, this is probably my bread and butter through the year. You know, if I sell you know two thousand of these, that's you know eight grand. This is his truck, man. It's all red. Living the dream. 65 <laughs> F350 with Look sides that flip up. <laughs> Turned into a kind of like a covered wagon when I travel. Nice. Yeah. This is your this is your ride from Maine to Florida, twice seventh, a year. Seventh round trip. It'll be this year. Nice. So it's. And great. you just load it full of produce. And the main people are happy to get all these onions early. Yep, but all mostly this. it's the people coming, what I bring south. You know, 2,500 pounds of winter squash, 500 pounds of apples, 200 pounds of garlic, 400 pounds of onions, 400 pounds of potatoes. And see, that pays for the trip. That pays for the More than pays for the trip. Wear and tear. Because I, you know, this thing, you know, I'm going to put two grand into it every year, but I probably made eight grand on what I brought back. So where do you sleep on your way up there? So it's got sides that flip up. I've taken them off, but so it's, it's like three foot taller. I put a tarp over that and then pack everything in and put a little bed in the back, <laughs> as far back as I can go. And then I've got my little cook stove in there so I can nice. make breakfast and coffee at the rest stop in the morning. So I don't pay any sleep, you know, stopover charges either. This Plus I'm charging trick, my man. produce. This is the trick. Then you don't have to make as much money. It's all about it. And Salatin talks about that a lot too. Yeah. Be frugal. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, it's amazing how much um, wealth can be given from the land by just taking care of it. Um, Here's the soil block makers. So. You guys know this. If you're longtime vlog fans, you've seen me do this. I love it. You've seen me teach this. No plastic involved. 
So, Look. but what's your mix? Oh, I buy it. I See, buy the pre-mix. Do you See, make your own? I, you know, again, I've learned to trust, you know, the Pioneer was Elliot Coleman. I mean, it was being done before. I mean, the Aztecs did it, I guess. Yeah. Um, but Coleman had a mix, and I started out with just compost, uh -huh. and I wasn't at all happy with it. Um, it didn't work out good, but then I figured, you know, I should follow Coleman's method. He's got yeah, a, he's a got elaborate a recipe. recipe. So I started with that, and I had incredible results. Right? Wow. But he, you know, he uses um, like a third of sand. Um, and my friend up in Maine, George Hulk, was all talking about granite sand and the paramagnetic effect of that. Okay. Are you familiar with that at all? Yeah. Okay, so I substituted the granite sand for Coleman's um, builder sand. Mm -hmm. And I did a side by side test with the builder sand and the granite sand. And at three weeks, the soil blocks, the plants were three, are a full inch taller. Nice. I'm going, cool. You know, I don't yeah. need to know the science behind it. Coleman heard no. about it and he said, oh, there's probably mineral difference. So he was interested because I told him yeah. about it. Um, you just take a base. You had Elliot Coleman as a base, but right. you ain't scared to have an experiment. Then you tweak it. That's you right. Know, for your... Trust what our, somebody's already developed and then go with it instead of yep. create the wheel again. Um, exactly. So what I usually do is I start the minis. You know, it's a different mix with the minis, but this is the big block mix. But So all you do is these are little three quarter inch blocks. And you pop them out, mm -hmm. and then I put a seed or two in each one. Um, and then sprout those out, grow them about maybe, perfect is about 12 days for me when everything's going good. Yeah. And then I move them up to the two inch one, which I can't imagine how many blocks I've made with this. It must be oh. getting on. It looks like it's well loved. Yeah. How, how old is this block maker? This one is, gotta be getting on 10 years old. Wow. You know, think about that. That uh, You know, everybody says, oh, I can't afford that $30 tool. Oh, whatever. I mean, you know, so. How, but how then, much would you have spent in plastic trays by now? Oh, yeah. And then the plants are better. It's not about so much about, you know, the, the savings or whatever. But the plants actually perform better, which is yeah, cool. So then get... you can imagine this little sprout in here, and then I just pop it in there. You and caught up. And then, yeah, and then sometimes within three days, you'll see roots coming down the sides. It's so... Um, it's just, it doesn't disturb the plant at all. It's amazing. So that's where I see it as very valuable. Yeah, because it can come out of the block instead of getting blocked by a block. plastic tray and getting wrapped around itself. Right. Yeah. And then it and then it has stress when you transplant it. And I also believe that again, how a plant grows is a lot of people say, why don't you just plant right into this? You're saving the step. But what I've seen is these don't dry out as fast. So a young seedling, I think they need that pulse of air and moisture, air and moisture. I think most of the commercial production in those cell trays, they keep them too wet. The plants aren't as healthy. So I've seen when this dries out a little, then it gets more air to the roots. And the same thing, then you got a plant that's producing more root, you put it in here, and the same pulse starts happening. Mm. You know, that's my theory. You know, I ain't no scientist, but that's what I found. Jim, thank you so much. This was amazing. Your salads look so good. Nice touch with the flowers. Yeah, it's my signature, but yeah, great seeing you and great. I love what you're doing. Keep Thank doing you. it. You have a great day. Yeah, see ya. I am back at Peter's farm, reunited with Mr. Brown and the kids. They went to Wikiwachi Springs. Many of you guys suggested that. That's the home of many, many mermaids. Did you guys see some mermaids this yeah. morning? Yeah. yeah, it was good. You guys liked it? What about some yeah. mermen? Did you see some mermen? <laughs> no mermen? Wait a minute. Hey, there weren't any mermen? Nope. Well, you need mermen to continue on, to continue the mermaid race. You know that, right? Rebecca and the yeah, Chiddlers you... went and oh, did no. the Wiki Wachi mermaid thing. We made a whole you. separate video just for that. Go! If you want to check that out, I'll leave the link right there and down there. We're also going to have a meet up tonight. Putting the camera away, I'm going to enjoy everybody. This is at Tampa, but our next one. It's going to be in Live Oak, Florida. Where was that? I had that. March 27th, I think it is. Yeah, March 27th. It's going to be at Live Oak. It's going to be at Full Circle Farm from, uh, what did we say? Six to eight? Yeah. I think we said six to eight ice cream party from Full Circle Farm. Organic ice cream. And a tour of the place. It's going to be worth it. It's in Live Oak, Florida. I'll leave info for that down in the description. <laughs>